and welcome to lesson 15.3 in the Alice tutorial series. Uh, lesson 15.3 is going to wrap up the introduction to class level methods, but it's going to touch on a topic that I think is fairly important that we haven't addressed yet, though I think through a little bit of trial and error most of you would be able to get it anyway, and that's going to be exporting sounds with your animation. So adding some detailed animations like we've done in lesson 15.1 and 15.2, but adding the sound effects to go along with it so that when you export the objects, the sounds go along with it. So today we're going to be taking a T-Rex object and animating uh, maybe a couple different roars for the T-Rex and maybe some walking animations that have associated sound effects to it. So that's what we'll be doing today. Let's go ahead and fire up Alice and get started on lesson 15.3, Sounds in Your Class Level Methods. So here we are in a brand new Alice world, and like I said, we're going to be animating a T-Rex, so let's go ahead and click on Add Objects, go to the Animals Gallery, and select the Dinosaurs folder from the Animals Gallery, and in there we should have a T-Rex, and it's a rather big object, so we'll get him placed out in the world here, and sort of adjust our camera a little bit, so that he's centered on the screen. And so now we have a T-Rex that we're going to use to start animating our world. The first thing you'll notice about the T-Rex is when you click on him, he doesn't have any methods of his own. So he doesn't inherently have the ability to roar or the ability to walk like some of the other objects. We're going to have to teach him how to do that, and we'll do it through class level methods. Now it should be noted that I did spend some time on the internet before this video and downloaded some usable sound effects from freesounds.org. Um, I searched dinosaur stomp as well as dinosaur roar and found some usable sound effects, but I mean, that's really up to you. Um, find sound effects that work for what you want to do so you, that you can follow along, but just know that they are on freesounds.org, so what I found was all readily available. The only thing is one of the sounds was paired with uh, about five other sound effects, so I had to use a free sound editing program to pull out just a single roar. So let's uh, go ahead and listen to those sounds real quick. Uh, you can see here that I went and got uh, three different sound effects. I've got a loud or large roar, kind of a low growling roar, along with some footsteps that are going to help us with our animation. So the footsteps... sound like that, even though they might be a little bit quiet on the YouTube end. Uh, the large roar sounds like this. And the low roar that's more growl-like sounds like this. So again, you, you might have to search around a little bit to find sounds that work for you, and those might be a little bit quiet coming through on YouTube, but that's what I'm going to be working with uh, in this animation here. So before you kind of continue on this video and start following along, you might want to queue up some sound effects that you can use in your animation. In order for a sound to export with an object, we need to make sure that we have the object we want the sound associated with selected, go to Properties, and import the sounds from there. So I'm going to import each of my three sounds. Let's go to Sounds, and I have them in a Class Level Methods Example folder, but I'm going to input my footsteps. I'm going to import the large roar, and I'm going to import the low roar. And again, all these came from freesounds.org, and I'll test them in my world to make sure that they work. Perfect, so all three of the sounds are coming through. If I import these sounds by going File, Import, they'll attach themselves to the world, and when my object is exported out of this world, they won't have the associated sounds. As long as I'm importing my sounds as part of the T-Rex object by going to T-Rex, Properties, and Importing here, these sound files will go with my, with my object into any other world. So the first uh, animation that I'm going to do is the large roar for the T-Rex, and this is very similar to the challenge program that you may have done in the last video. So let's, uh, with our T-Rex selected, I'm going to capture his current pose and name this standing. 
so that I can always return him to the standing position when he's done. By clicking on Add Objects, I'm going to go in and animate his set head so that he's kind of more in a roar position. Let's take his neck, gonna turn it to the right, take the head and turn it to the right. Um, take the whole head, maybe tilt it backwards because he's going to be kind of roaring into the air. And we'll grab just his bottom jaw. And that looks about right for a large roar position. So I have the jaw selected now. I want to capture this entire pose, so select the entire T-Rex. Make sure you don't do this while only the jaw is selected. We're going to capture a pose, and we're going to call this Loud Roar. Click on Done, and let's create a method to utilize these, these poses. So first, uh, right-click on the T-Rex. Set pose to, and let's put him back in the standing position. Now, in the methods tab, let's go ahead and create a new method for our T-Rex. So select the entire T-Rex, create new method, and we're going to call this large roar. And very simply, in a do together loop, I'm going to have the sound I just added play, so large roar. And while that's playing, and it's about a 3.3 animation. In order, we're going to have the T-Rex go into the loud roar position. We'll have him wait for about one second and then return to the standing position. So it's a pretty simple method that we've made here. In my first method, let's go ahead and call large roar and see what this looks like when we hit play. It looked okay, but he ended the roar a little bit too soon, so let's adjust this wait command, and let's maybe bump that up to 1.5 seconds and see if that looks any better. That looks a little bit more realistic, so I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. So now my T-Rex has the ability to use the large roar with the accompanying sound effect. Now that my T-Rex has the ability to do the large roar, let's make him have kind of that lower, deeper growl using the sound effect that we imported here, low roar. And we're going to do the exact same uh, procedure here. We're going to create a new method, make sure the entire T-Rex is selected, go to the Methods tab, and we'll call this Growl. And in a Do Together loop, we are going to play the growl sound, or the low roar sound, and that's 4.3 seconds long. Now what I'm going to have to do is set some poses for the uh, T-Rex, and I think I'm actually going to use a series of two poses this time, and instead of having him, him rear his head back, we'll have him kind of lower his head, open his jaw just a little bit, and kind of make more of an aggressive, low-key uh, stance. Let's go into our object editing screen and start by affecting subparts. And we're going to have him lower his head just a little bit and turn to the left or to his right. And let's lower the jaw. So turn him so that he's almost facing us directly. Grab just the lower jaw here. I think I might have to move the camera to get underneath here. There we go, let's grab just the jaw, make sure we have effect subparts. There we go, and we'll have just a kind of open just a little bit there. And that should be good, so back to the entire T-Rex, capture pose, and we'll call this growling one. And now that we have growling one set, the next thing we want to do is I want him to turn his head to the to the side while he's growling. So we'll affect subparts, grab his head, and have him turn just a little bit. And uh, we'll have him tilt his head as well. So grab this and affect subparts, tilt the head to the side, 
Awesome. And put them back in front of us here. There we go. So that is going to be pose number two. So select T-Rex, capture pose. We'll call this growling two. And now that we have our two poses set, we can put him back into the standing position by right clicking on him, set pose to standing. And now let's build our T-Rex growl method. This will be not too much more complicated. We'll use a do in order statement, have him start with growling one, move directly into growling two, maybe wait half a second and then return to the standing position. So let's see what this looks like. Let's go back to my first method. We're going to disable large roar for now so we don't have to watch it. And we are just going to have our T-Rex growl. The animation looks okay, but the speed is a little bit too fast for me. So we'll add a duration of 1.5 seconds for this first animation. Kind of have him take a two second head turn maybe wait for half a second and then put him back into the standing position over a duration of 1.5 seconds. That might be a little bit long, but let's see what this looks like when we hit play. Now that ended up looking about right. So you can tweak this and play with it however you want and maybe affect different subparts, but our T-Rex now has a large roar and a growl that he can do. So if we enable both of these. We now have an object that's capable of doing two things that one, it wasn't able to do before and that have associated sound effects. And I'm not quite done with this animation yet. I definitely still want to create uh, a walking animation that our dinosaur can use to move throughout the world and get some sound effects in there. But that might take a little while to build and this video is already starting to get a little lengthy. So we're gonna cut it right here. Uh, hopefully you've been able to create a dinosaur that can roar and growl. In the next video, in Lesson 15.4, we'll address having the dinosaur walk and then the challenge program in, that you'll find in the next video will be to take that dinosaur out of the world you created in it, him in and put him into a more dinosaur friendly world. So that's going to do it for Lesson 15.3. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you any way that I can. And we will continue this uh, program in Lesson 15.4. Thank you so much for your support of the Alice Tutorial Series, and have a great day.